we started talking about the isomap algorithm, and this is the outline for uh, how we execute that. So first off, we use the geodesic distances that we've uh, just uh, learned how to compute for every pair of points within our training set. And then from there, we just turn around and use this multidimensional scaling algorithm that we discussed a couple of videos back. The advantage here over just using Euclidean distance with our MDS algorithm is that uh, if we have a manifold that, that folds back close to itself, we don't consider the, the two halves of the, of the folds as being really near each other, but instead, uh, because we have to traverse the, the, uh, the graph, we consider those distances to be actually quite large. So let's look at this in code. So I've already reset the notebook back to the Swiss roll. So there's our three-dimensional Swiss roll there. And let's give Isomap a try. And for that, we get to declare how many neighbors. And for the instant, we'll just de declare that as five. We also have to tell, uh, tell isomap what the output dimension is. And then we have to tell isomap uh, which uh, particular numerical solver it's going to use. And I'm just selecting uh, dense here. There are a couple of other options. All right, and then we just fit our data. All right, and there we go. And of course, it's going to complain. Ah. Want to use the official spelling there. OK, so it's lowercase so for that. So, so for that particular data set, the execution actually is rather, relatively quick. And now let's uh, go ahead and project that data set into our uh, new space. I should say here I did a fit, and then I did a transform. I separated those, whereas up in MDS, I did a fit transform altogether. Uh, you can do the same in isomap if you want. Uh, MDS, however, does not support transform in and of itself. You have to do a fit transform. That's generally not the case with the MDS algorithm, but it is for the implementation that's in scikit-learn. And finally, let's uh, plot our points in the new space. So that is Y3. And there we go. So uh, Isomap actually has done uh, a pretty darn good job of taking that Swiss roll and unrolling it. And in particular, we've captured both dimensions of the manifold. So here I, I define things in terms of neighborhoods of five, and you can, you, you can see that the distribution is a little bit clumpy. I kind of expect it to be a little uh, less uh, clumpy, and perhaps by increasing our neighborhood, we'll do uh, a little bit better here. So let's give that a try. So I've actually learned uh, quite well. And, and you notice now we, we have less clustering, although you can see there's a on this end with the red, there's a bit more clustering. And again, part of that's uh, happening because uh, the points on the inside of the Swiss roll are closer together in the original space. And on the outside, these are the red points. These points are further away from one another. So they're going to form some more natural uh, clusters. If we increase the neighborhood even larger, then that should kind of smooth that out a bit more. Although at some point we, we might be a little bit more into a degenerate zone. Um, but actually the, those 20 neighbors actually did quite well in, in terms of getting us away from the clustering. And there's still a bit here and a bit down here. Uh, but, but we're doing a very good job. Okay, so now let's 
go from the Swiss rule data set to our arrow data set. So there we go. So we've restored our variable values for that. And then we'll progress down to the ISO map. And just for fun, we'll go back to five neighbors and plot that. And that actually executed quite quickly. So this result is actually a bit mysterious. It's interesting that it's very asymmetric uh, between the, uh, the blue side versus the uh, red side. Part of what's going on here, uh, so we've got our 1D part of our manifold sitting right in here. Part of what's going on with the difference here versus the difference versus what's happening on this end uh, is that uh, in the arrow data set, as soon as we drop off this 1D area and into this area here, the, the distribution of the points becomes a lot wider. And, and so it's having some trouble uh, finding neighborhoods and in particular connected, nicely connected graphs. Whereas on this end, this transition, uh, the density is essentially the, the same uh, and then it slowly uh, changes. So, so that's why we're, we're seeing a difference in, in how the things are distributed here in the new space. It is kind of interesting though that we've got cyan points along here and then some cyan points out over here. It sort of suggests that the original arrow has, has some uh, islands of, of cyan points. So this area here is sort of an island. This is an island over here. And then those are separated from the points over here. So that, that's probably where, those, where this is coming from. So that's one island there, another, and, and another out over here. So let's increase that. Uh, neighborhood and in doing so we should do away some with those islands and there we go so for the for the blue data set or the blue side of the arrow uh, we're now getting results that look a lot more like what we're expecting so we're acknowledging the fact that the distribution is really wide uh, just as we transition into the arrowhead itself and then it narrows again as we we move toward the tip. Though what is interesting is on this side here, we're not really acknowledging the wide distribution and the, the feather of the arrow. Um, we can see some amount of spreading, but, but we're not getting uh, a very uh, nice uh, distribution over here. Just for fun, let's go ahead and increase this neighborhood to 20, see what that gives us. That didn't change things all that much. And I bet if we doubled that again, we were not going to see much of a change. Okay, so, so again, we have essentially the same distribution of points. So, so far our MDS model actually uh, has done uh, quite well on this particular problem. Uh, but uh, Isomap certainly did better with our Swiss rural type problem. All right, it's time to look at uh, one more algorithm before we're done with this uh, set of methods.